So Alejandro Zaire Polo, who joins us from London where he's an architect and a founding partner of Foreign Office Architects, was one of the first architects that I wanted to bring in um, to lecture at Rice, for he not only has a very clear project, but he also knows what's the matter with architecture. Snowstorms on the East Coast thwarted that effort last spring, however, as, as you all probably remember. One might infer from these scheduling challenges that Alejandro represents the difficult, but let me assure you that today's extraordinary, extraordinarily benevolent climate is more symbolic of both his character and his approach to work. Despite being one of the busiest people I know between his practice, his teaching, and his prolific writing, Alejandro always seems to have his thumb at the ready. Blackberry responses come at all hours and at great length. Still. His generosity, energy, and intellectual drive characterize all aspects of his production, and I'm very grateful that he's come here not just to lecture, but to participate in the Cullinan series, which means that we have him for a Brock and Talk, a lecture, an interview, and a lunchtime discussion. If by the time Alejandro leaves tomorrow afternoon, the entire Rice School of Architecture doesn't have thoughts about the envelope, I just don't know what to do. In preparing for Alejandro's visit, one of my seminar students asked why it is that Alejandro writes in addition to designing. The implication being that one tends to do one or the other, and if you have the opportunity to do the former, that is producing projects, and one thing that FOA has succeeded at doing perhaps better than any other significant design practice of its generation is getting things built, then why spend the time articulating arguments on paper? It's at once an honest and telling question. Despite the economic slowdown, we're still in a mindset that tries to get things done and done fast. More and more students seem to want to open their own offices immediately upon graduation. And despite years of architectural writing being understood as a practice in its own right, at least since 1968, according to Michael Hayes, since much earlier others would argue, there remains a belief in the separation of theory and practice, thinking and doing, left brain and right brain. Alejandro represents, no, I would say embodies, the metaphor is itself a tricky subject with Alejandro. Alejandro embodies the merger of these two binaries into exactly what an architectural project needs to be, an argument or an ambition that pushes the discipline in a new direction and that is tested out in built form. Um, those of you doing or approaching thesis might note that this is pretty much the definition of a thesis. I'd argue that it's actually the definition of any studio's architectural project. In introducing Alejandro, I'd like to first underscore his talents as a designer. Having practiced together with him, I can attest to his ability to read form and space, his commitment to the technical and material possibilities of architecture, and to his interest in engaging real-world problems with real-built possibilities. But it's two publications, in fact, that I would turn to to frame or characterize Alejandro, the first being El Croquis, and the second being Robert Venturi's Complexity and Contradiction. Alejandro started writing for El Croquis as early as 1987. Since that time, he's accrued a formidable list of articles and especially interviews, which I'd love to see collected as a publication someday. In interviewing over a dozen significant practitioners, ranging from Murias to Rem, Alejandro honed their arguments as well as his own thinking about the discipline. El Croquis in itself offers a terrific model of what Alejandro stands for. It combines analytical criticism with not just terrific photographic documentation, but detailed pro uh, project drawings. The second publication that I think helps to situate Alejandro is Venturi's Complexity and Contradiction from 66. With this publication, Venturi surveyed architectural practice and history, reading projects formally, contextually, and semiotically. The question at the center of the book is the relationship of the building's outside to its inside and how architecture mediates between those two worlds. With his envelopes argument, a work that is in progress and textual but also at the core of Alejandro's design thinking, he offers, I would argue, a 21st century version of complexity and contradiction, perhaps with a little bit of learning from Las Vegas turned into the, or, or thrown in the very background. Alejandro engages architecture's form, materiality, and systems in relationship to cultural legibility, that is politics, as well as a disciplinary legibility, that is typologies. I appreciate his willingness to clear his calendar for us twice in one year and his willingness to engage us as participants in this work in progress. Please join me in welcoming Alejandro here to rise.
Do we have a microphone or do I have to scream? Um, we can try it, but it does not seem to be working. No? Does it work? No? So, can you, can you hear me? Huh? That one? Can you hear me? Does this, does this work better? No? Not at all? Okay, so <clears throat> I'll try to speak loud. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to sustain uh, an hour and a half of uh, speaking loud after uh, an 11 hour flight, but I'll try. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. Obviously, this was the introduction of a very good old friend. <laughs> a little bit uh, scary to be put after complexity and, and contradiction or having to do the 21st century uh, uh, <coughs> version of uh, comple complexity and, and, and contradiction. Um, so, uh, as uh, Sara already in introduced <coughs> the, the lecture that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do tonight is uh, on the envelope, which is a, a, an investigation that I have been developing now for a, for a number of uh, years, both on the academic and on the, on the, on the practice uh, sides of, of my, of my um, activities. And I first wanted to explain why I decided at some point, probably around 2002, 2003, to start dealing specifically with, uh, with the problem of, uh, of the, the envelope. Um, uh, the, the project of the envelope started, we, we had already a, a pre view of, uh, of this with a, with a group of, uh, of students, but started uh, deliberately as an attempt to correct uh, a little bit the trajectory of what I think it was not uh, my own trajectory, but the trajectory of a whole generation of, uh, of architects, more or less my age, like, like Sarah, for example, <coughs> that uh, I, so, uh, I suppose, or, or I don't know if I suppose, but, but uh, uh, differentiated uh, ourselves from previous uh, generations, perhaps uh, one of the things that probably differentiated us from other generations was the fact that we, to a degree, suspended the uh, political discourse uh, as a support for the, for the practice of uh, architecture uh, possibly in order to be able to engage more fully with a number of uh, processes that were happening <coughs> as we were was, as we were uh, uh, growing uh, growing up as uh, as architects um, and uh, at some point around 2002 2003 I, I, I realized that maybe we had gone a little bit too far and it was necessary in order to retrieve uh, a certain degree of uh, agency, transformative agency, uh, to go back to the issue of politics and try to bring it uh, into, the, into the practices that we had been uh, developing. <clears throat> and I, I, uh, I mean, this is a little bit uh, of, a, of a slightly different discourse, but, but I I uh, started thinking about what had determined previous political uh, uh, discourses. Uh, uh, so I looked at uh, what other people did, uh, other people that defined the political discourse in the, uh, uh, the the political discourse in the second half of the 20th century uh, did. And, and for example, uh, there was this uh, idea of equality as, as one of the, the, the things that one could see repeated uh, across uh, different uh, categories. And uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the idea of doing the envelope in a way came from the realization that um, the people before, uh, in a way, determined the political 
uh, discourse that we were trying to, uh, or that maybe other generations were, were, were trying to apply to uh, architecture, and we had been growing in an age in which there was uh, other types of political operators that didn't have political office, didn't have, uh, uh, or didn't want to be seen as uh, having an ideology, and yet they had an enormous impact in the in the way in which uh, we all uh, live. Uh, that means they they effectively affected dramatically the uh, regimes of power and therefore the, the politics of. Uh, of the last few uh, de decades, and, and instead of having that idea of, uh, of uh, equality, most of them operated on very concrete aspects of uh, delivering a service, delivering a product. Uh, uh, so th there is this, this kind of uh, uh, joke of uh, cheapness as uh, as the replacement of uh, equality, but but deep down the what I think is interesting about these uh, uh, characters, uh, whether they, uh, whether we we like them or not, I think that they are equally tricky as as the previous one once uh, were. Uh, but uh, what is interesting about them is that they um, uh, altered uh, drastically uh, certain uh, political regimes by tampering with the mechanisms of delivering uh, services or, or goods. And, and so, in a way, the project of the envelope <coughs> comes as an attempt to identify, and, and uh, I, I was also uh, saying to the people I was meeting before, uh, to the group of students I was meeting before, that this is not yet a manifesto, but almost a, a series of experiments or indexes of of uh, of certain uh, processes that that uh, or certain casuistic that I'm interested in, uh, the, the project of, of the envelope was an attempt to identify one sector of uh, uh, the practice of architecture, uh, one concrete area of the practice of architecture that I think is particularly rich in uh, in uh, political possibilities, and and that was basically the reason why. Uh, I decided to focus the the investigation uh, in the in the subject <coughs> of the of the envelope. Uh, as I was saying, I am from a from a generation uh, that um, started practicing maybe 15 or 20 years ago, and this is a slide that I used to show in in many uh, of my lectures that was based on uh, on uh, uh, the discourse from uh, David Harvey, the, the, the British uh, uh, sociologist, uh, who characterized the, the uh, global capitalism, or, or what he calls the, the regimes of uh, flexible, uh, capitalist regimes of flexible accumulation, as being uh, produced as, as being sustained, uh, as being supported by two types of mechanisms. Uh, the, what he calls mechanisms of uh, spatial and temporal displacement. So m mechanisms of uh, uh, spatial displacement are uh, transport and telecommunication infrastructure, anything that helps us to move information, people, goods, profits uh, across the, the globe. <coughs> And uh, uh, mechanisms of uh, uh, temporal displacement are fundamentally uh, credit systems, financial systems that enable us to uh, shift back, backwards and forwards uh, the, um, the, uh, our, our financial uh, obligations or uh, uh, economical uh, exchanges. And so, for, uh, I, when when I was start when I when I started practicing architecture. Uh, the idea that uh, that um, I was looking for was, uh, in a way, a kind of implementation of these mechanisms, or, or in a way, the experiment was how are these mechanisms going to be 
made into, crystallized into uh, architecture, how space, uh, urban spaces, architectural spaces are going to be uh, uh, affected by the fact that now we live in this world uh, where in a way the, the, there was this utopia of a borderless, uh, seamless uh, 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 space that uh, I think many other architects from my generation was, were, were uh, uh, desperately trying to uh, explore. <clears throat> and I think that uh, Yokohama was obviously uh, a result of uh, those uh, explorations uh, of uh, reality as, a, as primarily uh, characterized by, by flow uh, as reality as a kind of liquid uh, uh, milieu uh, that, uh, that uh, <coughs> constantly moves, etc., etc. Now, the reason why uh, the envelope also becomes important as a, as a kind of uh, uh, revision of, of uh, uh, the previous uh, positions that, that, that maybe we, we were interested in is that uh, there is a number of things that happened in 2001 and, and 2008 that are basically dismantling those mechanisms. So the, the, the transport infrastructure, the, the mechanisms of spatial displacement are used to bomb cities and everybody knows what happened with uh, the credit system. So those two pillars that uh, Harvey uh, 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 proposed as the the mechanisms upon which the, 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 uh, the regimes of flexible accumulation were, were based uh, suddenly uh, collapse, <clears throat> and as a result of that, uh, what we realize is that uh, borders, limits uh, are re-emerging with an unexpected uh, violence. Uh, so that utopia in which we had grown uh, of, a, of a fluid, borderless uh, reality is uh, suddenly being replaced by the certainty that uh, the world is not without borders uh, uh, and yes, there are changes, borders are not where they used to be but uh, they are uh, still uh, there and we are, we are still as architects uh, charged with the the duty of uh, of forming them and, and hopefully forming them in uh, in a different way to the way uh, some of these uh, processes are uh, unfolding. <coughs> there is another uh, another consideration that uh, that uh, was important at the moment in which I uh, decided to to focus on the subject of the envelope, which is obviously the whole. Uh, uh, environmental uh, concern, the, the fact that we are increasingly uh, conscious and concerned that there is, there is a, almost like an absolute limit to this uh, permanent growth of, of uh, capitalism, which is the, the, the natural resources. The, the earth has a limited amount of natural resources at that, and that flies in the face of a system that that is based on a constant expansion. So how uh, the presence of that absolute border is going to uh, compartmentalize, is going to affect the, the, uh, the creation of these and the definition of these new types of uh, borders uh, was, uh, was uh, also uh, part of, of this uh, project. The envelope is, is the element that controls <clears throat> most of the of the or controls uh, how the the, the, the building um, exchanges energy with the milieu and therefore is the single element where maybe eighty percent of the energy exchanges between the building and the outside uh, happen and therefore uh, it is uh, probably the 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 chapter of architecture that is more uh, uh, capable of giving us a certain agency in, into these uh, uh, processes that we are now uh, facing as a discipline. So the, the, the theory of, of the envelope that I've been uh, uh, trying to construct for, for a while and this uh, is uh, still 
I think far from being uh, complexity and, and contradiction, but uh, hopefully on the way was that if in the past uh, architects who were uh, trying to <coughs> have to shape uh, the way in which political or social relationships uh, were uh, uh, implemented or were controlled by uh, architecture uh, used to resort to the plan or uh, to the section as those uh, di dis discipline, disciplinary mechanisms uh, uh, or mechanisms internal to the discipline of, of architecture that most efficiently uh, shaped the, those uh, relationships. It is, uh, it is the envelope and, and uh, uh, the envelope in its in its uh, two uh, uh, phases, uh, the element that most effectively can today uh, determine the, the, the politics of architecture, or in, in other words, the way in which architecture engages with different types of uh, power, power uh, regimes. And in order to do this, <coughs> probably we need to uh, uh, generate a, a theory that is capable of bringing together uh, both the technical, the environmental aspects of uh, the envelope, but also the, the more uh, linguistic, uh, representational uh, side of uh, of uh, of uh, the the facade. I mean, the, the, this is uh, more the, the the way in which uh, architecture has traditionally theorized. Uh, uh, about the the envelope of the buildings, which, which I, I I think is is obviously not not any longer significant by itself, but still uh, uh, needs to be addressed. Not perhaps in the in the way in which uh, the the traditional the classical treatises uh, uh, were addressing it as a system of proportions or or as a or as a language. And so the, the proposal that uh, I've been developing is uh, uh, one that A, tries to understand the envelope not just as the facade, as the vertical enclosure of the building, but, but as the, uh, the uh, composition between the roof and the, the walls of the building. So I don't think that is uh, relevant uh, anymore to, uh, to to address just the the vertical uh, surface as uh, the one that is uh, uh, architecturally uh, relevant. Uh, we need to to understand the envelope as a as a as a whole, and th this is probably also uh, related to the development of building technologies. Today, the roof is. Uh, much closer to the facade than it used to be in, in, in conventional building uh, technologies. A curtain wall system is capable of doing the whole envelope or a, or a, or a, a corrugated uh, uh, or a metallic uh, cladding system is now capable of, of uh, covering all the faces of, of the buildings and those are the construction systems that are increasingly uh, more uh, popular. <coughs> so the, the first idea was that we needed to treat the, the, all the faces of the, of the envelope uh, together. Uh, and and uh, the second idea was that uh, the envelope uh, needed to transcend the, the, the subject of the surface. Uh, the, within the, the discipline, there has been, in the last few years, quite a few uh, attempts to <coughs> experiment with the with the making of the surface of the of the building. Uh, the, the theory of the envelope will be one that will relate the making of the building of the surface with uh, with also the aspect ratio and and uh, or, or the, the 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 massing. So uh, in a way, the the proposal is that there are four typologies of envelopes, <coughs> uh, which are these four, and I, I will explain them uh, uh, afterwards by using a number of uh, projects uh, uh, from uh, the office. Uh, and 
in every one of them there is a number of uh, uh, possibilities, uh, political possibilities, uh, issues that, uh, that, uh, that affect uh, specifically certain aspects of how we build uh, uh, a society or how, how we uh, handle uh, uh, regimes of, uh, of uh, power and uh, the, the theory as it stands now tries to identify those potentials. Now, uh, I'm not going to show the projects uh, as, a, as a kind of uh, exemplary uh, uh, casuistic of how to do envelopes. That's not, uh, first of all, they are not, uh, they are not kind of ideal envelopes in, in any way. Uh, in a way, I, I think that the projects are, uh, have to be seen more as indexes or as those uh, moments in which being a practicing architect you are exposed suddenly with certain possibilities and you react in a certain way to those uh, possibilities in the in the measure you you can but uh, but i don't i don't want to put them as examples of what we need to um, uh, to do with uh, with envelopes so i'm going to go now through the four <coughs> categories and uh, uh, use these four categories in a way to, to classify a number of, of uh, projects from the office. The, the first category is what I call flat horizontal. You all uh, understand quite intuitively what these buildings are like. They're not uh, uh, exclusive from modernity. They've been there for many years. Every time that uh, uh, we had to cover large areas of ground for uh, activities uh, involving l the convergence of uh, lots of people or uh, uh, transport of uh, goods or things like that, so airports, uh, uh, shopping centers, uh, bazaars, um, these type of buildings are uh, paradigmatic of this, uh, of this uh, category of uh, envelope. And what is interesting about this category of, uh, of envelope in terms of what I, I think may be uh, issues, subjects that uh, we can activate, we can manipulate uh, uh, by designing them in a, in a certain way is that they are usually buildings that are large enough to contain nature and, and in fact you, you can probably remember that most of these buildings contain different uh, uh, iterations of nature in one way or another. All these kind of uh, bamboo gardens that you see in airports, shopping centers, etc., etc., are just an, in, uh, 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 an index of how <coughs> in these vast uh, uh, buildings one of the main uh, possibilities or one of the main problems that we are, that, that we are facing and, and uh, one of the main possibilities that we have is uh, that of resetting or reorganizing uh, the relationships between, between the natural and the, and the artificial. <clears throat> so you see the, the nature happening also now due to the availability of certain technologies of uh, vegeta vegetating roofs and, and things like that. Uh, suddenly one of the important decisions is whether uh, nature is in or out, uh, what is the relationship between nature and the envelope uh, is one of the devices that we can, that we can uh, use. And also the, 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 the sheer scale of these uh, buildings uh, uh, often uh, these days uh, make them uh, potentially uh, surrogates of the na natural ground, the ground, one, the ground being in some ways something uh, that is a derivation of nature uh, uh, as a as a whole. So that possibility of the ground becoming hollow, the, the ground becoming artificial, uh, the ground becoming unstable, <coughs> are I think other possibilities that we uh, can use when when working on this uh, on this type of of envelopes. The, the other interesting uh, possibility, I think, within this, uh, this, uh, this type is uh, the figuration, the faciality of, uh, of the envelope. These are normally very large uh, uh, volumes. 
that uh, uh, because of their scale and because of their concentration inside uh, have very little determination of uh, um, of uh, uh, for, for the for the for the vertical limit of the envelope. Uh, so neither climatically, not in terms of transparency, uh, these uh, uh, surfaces have very much to do. Uh, they they can just be blank walls, and they will uh, almost uh, cover the same environmental. Uh, 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 role that than 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 this this type of uh, acrobatics that architects uh, usually do uh, in order to show that we are uh, doing architecture. So the the, the problem of uh, active frontage of uh, figuration of relationship between these organizations and the broader uh, uh, urban uh, field is another one of the of the possibilities that we can uh, manipulate. So two projects uh, to uh, talk about this uh, category. One of them uh, finished a few years back in uh, Istanbul, in Turkey, in this suburban location in a kind of infrastructural no node uh, on the Asian side of Istanbul. This building had to be placed to IKEA. IKEA is the, is the flat horizontal uh, envelope by uh, excellence uh, is the paradigm of uh, flat horizontalness, uh, uh, kind of uh, artificial, uh, abstract, sealed uh, uh, with uh, with a huge asphalt platform on in front and on top. Uh, uh, so this is basically the type of envelopes that this. Uh, uh, that that the, the, the current uh, technologies are and the current political uh, approaches to, to this uh, typology of envelope uh, and endorses and in a way what we tried to do was almost to challenge that uh, prototype by by uh, using the the ground by using some kind of um, uh, camouflage with the existing ground this uh, clay that is uh, characteristics of uh, char char characteristic of the ground in, in Istanbul uh, uh, to, uh, to make uh, topography, to, to blend the envelope uh, within the, the surrounding topography and turn it into a sort of park or, or landscape. So it, this was a, a shopping center that we had to locate next to uh, IKEA in which uh, what we, you, you see the box of of IKEA, you see also how uh, one of the, the the things that we are trying to exploit is the 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 horizontal uh, face of of the envelope as a, as an architectural experience. That is something that uh, perhaps a few years back was not that common, but but today uh, is becoming more and more uh, uh, common. Uh, because of a number of, uh, of reasons, densification of the cities, availability of certain ve ve vegetation technologies and structural technologies, etc. Et so w what we did was literally to blend the roof uh, onto the, the ground, therefore uh, uh, also uh, trying to destabilize uh, uh, this uh, natural ground that, uh, that exists there and that in, in the other paradigm is simply flattened and, uh, and sanitized by, by the uh, parking surface. And this is uh, uh, the way in which uh, we uh, build that uh, surface using clay, using the same material that uh, uh, is already present uh, on, the, on the site and has uh, uh, well <coughs> uh, uh, tested technology uh, locally. So these are, I'm just, I'm not going to, to uh, talk very much about these uh, images, uh, just to, to uh, show you what are some of the effects of, of uh, treating the roof like, like this. Uh, uh, some of the, the interesting things that we did also in terms of uh, trying to uh, blend more effectively the natural and the artificial was to try to open this otherwise sealed environment 
uh, with uh, skylights that would ventilate or, or daylight the internal uh, spaces and at the same time will form the topography of this uh, uh, roof uh, garden. Uh, uh, I think I mean, th th this is some of this effect of, in a way, destabilization of the of the ground that is produced by by uh, by the the envelope and the merging of the envelope with the, with the ground. The second project is a project that we are uh, doing now in uh, Birmingham, uh, which is the uh, redevelopment of uh, New Street Station, which is that building that you see there. It's placed in the middle of, uh, of Birmingham. You can see that the tracks are sunken under the, the, the ground, and the commission in this particular case was to uh, wrap the building. Uh, so we didn't, we didn't, we were not asked to to do the the redevelopment of the station. We were just uh, requested to do uh, a new image uh, because there was another larger engineering company that was putting the escalators and doing the 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 inside of the of the building. So it was literally a problem of defining the the face of this very large. Uh, <clears throat> flat horizontal envelope uh, without having the possibility of relying on any of the of the traditional uh, remits of, uh, of an architectural facade which is to establish a number of uh, uh, relationships of transparency or opaqueness or translucency between the inside and the outside. Here we couldn't touch that, uh, that uh, skin neither uh, neither to open uh, visual uh, relationships nor environmental uh, continuities. So, so uh, the, the problem that we faced was basically uh, how to ground the concept of the envelope or what image, what, what identity to produce with this envelope. We, we started looking at uh, Birmingham as a as a city that is basically uh, a hub city that is uh, formed by a series of uh, paths and, and canals converging in that in that location and and the idea that we that we started to, to develop was that maybe that scheme rather than trying to uh, um, to draw its uh, its uh, uh, identity from the inside of the building was simply going to try to, to uh, reflect a number of things that are happening in that location in Birmingham. First of all, the trains that are going underground, then the, the crowds of uh, commuters flocking in and out of the station, then the, uh, the signage, the signboards that are, are also part of the <coughs> of the uh, phenomenology of uh, of the station and 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 finally uh, the sky. So in, in a way, what we were trying to do is to uh, uh, make the skin uh, 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 a reflection of everything that was moving, uh, and, and and therefore build the the identity of the project as a station as a station that uh, was also representative of the identity of of Birmingham as this hub uh, uh, place. So the last, uh, the last uh, uh, stratum is, is the clouds, because uh, Birmingham used to have uh, uh, a famously black uh, sky that, that now, uh, now since the uh, steel industry has moved to Korea, uh, and there is global warming is much more uh, amiable. So we devised this uh, system of a, of a wrap that is a reflect, reflecting uh, surface uh, that is uh, designed in every uh, point in order to reflect certain um, uh, selected uh, uh, elements within this mix of these uh, four ingredients. Uh, so we were trying op al always to avoid the reflection of the city uh, in front, uh, and, and that's what basically uh, produce a number of sections that, depending on the viewpoint, 
form the surfaces that wrap the, the station. You, you can see that it's a simple mirror uh, wrap and that out of this scanning of the, of the field around uh, uh, shapes a number of sections that then we morph into a surface that is what will produce the image of the future uh, new street. So I think what is interesting about about this uh, uh, this uh, approach as a as a as a maybe as an as an alternative to more conventional approaches to the identity of the envelope is the is the idea that the envelope is related to the field outside the the project rather than regulating the 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 vision between the inside of the building and the outside. So it is actually the depth of the field in front of the station that produces the uh, geometry of the uh, building. Uh, you see some other images of this. I don't know whether this is going to work. This is an animation that is supposed to show. No, it doesn't work. I mean, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. The, the animation shows basically how, how the facade reflects the different things. We are going to move to the next category, which is the spherical uh, uh, envelopes. By spherical, uh, I don't mean literally spherical buildings, but buildings that have an equivalent aspect ratio. So they are more or less as deep, as uh, wide, and as tall. So they enclose uh, a more or less uh, rounded volume. For example, this is a spherical envelope following this uh, categorization, or this is an a spherical uh, envelope uh, too, in the sense that those dimensions are more or less equidistant. Uh, and this, <coughs> this type of envelopes uh, have certain um, uh, particularities. The first one is that they are the, the, the type of envelopes that have the lowest ratio. So for every square meter of envelope, you have more cubic meters of space contained. And that is very important because it means that, uh, in a way, the envelope has a much less relevant role to play as an environmental device. Because it is, there, are, there is more volume per square meter of facade than in other, in other typologies. So that, that, is, uh, that is important uh, because it frees the, the envelope uh, uh, almost to do, it, 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 it makes the envelope more free than in other uh, types of envelope uh, uh, to uh, explore different configurations that are not necessarily driven by uh, uh, thermal uh, or, or environmental performance <coughs> in general. These type of envelopes uh, are probably difficult to occupy without air conditioning. You need, you need mechanical ventilation. Because of that uh, uh, ratio, uh, they are not very useful envelopes. And if you, if you look in the history of, uh, of architecture, they normally uh, coincide with almost uh, uh, monumental buildings or manifesto uh, type of buildings, buildings that have to show an image. So in other words, as opposed to other typologies of envelopes, this, uh, this typology has um, a very high level of um, uh, demand in terms of uh, iconographic uh, performance or, or, or expressive uh, performance and a very low demand of environmental performance. That is what, what uh, establishes the, the, the field of possibilities for this uh, typology of, uh, of envelope. And it's a typology that in the last few years has sustained uh, all sorts of experiments by architects. Architects have been exploring the technologies of uh, computer uh, manufacturing or silk screening or uh, God knows uh, what uh, uh, with this uh, with this type of envelopes, precisely because of the of the freedom uh, that they have. They they are 
proportionally, I mean, if, if you do a complex envelope with one of these buildings, because the ratio is lower, it doesn't affect so much the budget. Uh, you can spend more money uh, doing ex experiments. You have less uh, demands. Uh, so there is, there is a, a, a lot of uh, research, in a way, that has been produced uh, uh, on this uh, typology uh, in terms of architectural uh, expression. Uh, and in, in some cases, which, which are, I think, I mean, this is one of my favorite uh, cases, uh, uh, is the, the Chinese Olympics, where, where there is a number of commissions made to uh, foreign architects, and they all end up with uh, these uh, uh, type of textures that are uh, always consistent uh, across the whole envelope, but systematically uh, differentiated. No? So I I in a way, uh, the, what is interesting about all these uh, experiments is precisely that they, the, the, the possibilities for uh, representation uh, move to the, um, to the construction of the, of, the, of the cells that constitute the envelope, or of the detail that constitute the, the, the envelope, like, like in, 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 in particularly in this, in this case. So, so uh, the, this idea of, uh, <coughs> of uh, uh, what, what, what I think is the real potential for, for this envelopes is actually to, to, despite the fact that, that these uh, surfaces are in some way detached from the, uh, uh, from the um, uh, environmental or functional performances are, and are more driven uh, primarily by uh, a need of uh, representation is precisely the, the possibility of uh, establishing some sort of new transparency. Uh, uh, between between the representation or, or the, the representational uh, uh, demands that is, that are placed on these envelopes and and the uh, and the actual performance of these envelopes, uh, this is this is a this is a failed project, a project that we that we did that I think was uh, uh, interesting and, and definitely part of of this typology, but we had to abandon because of uh, problems with the. With the client, but where uh, uh, perhaps the the type of uh, representational performance had more purely to to do with uh, with an image. No, this this, this uh, building was supposed to contain the morgue in in Madrid. Uh, is a is a building that we <coughs> uh, that we started in a way looking at this type of images. We we had to do a round plan building because the master plan uh, for, for this city of justice that then was abandoned by the, by the client was that every building had to be uh, round in, in, in plan. But thinking about round, roundedness, we, we started to realize that there was something uh, uh, that had to do with uh, liminal states of the, of the body that, uh, that uh, Insisted in the in the round, and and that is what uh, led us into the idea of shaping the building as a as a ball that uh, that enclosed an atrium that uh, was uh, uh, an inverse uh, uh, bowl, and that was covered in in this in this kind of tessellation with. With holes that was basically what uh, what uh, we couldn't implement and, and forced us to resign from the from the from the project. This is the project. This is kind of a, a, out of uh, curiosity because we did, we couldn't really implement uh, the the detail in this case. So the expression uh, uh, was left uh, just in the in the shape of the of the of this uh, kind of uh, sphere uh, that then uh, formed an internal atrium. Anyway, this, this was just a, a kind of, uh, in a way, uh, mm, mm, small uh, experiment that, that had more to do with the, with the form rather than with the texture of the, of the building. Uh, this is another, another uh, project that we completed a few years <coughs> 
a go uh, which is not exactly round, but uh, for which I think some of the experimentation that we played in the in the facade had to do with uh, with that uh, idea of a space that is uh, detached from the outside and is is more or less equipotential in in the three dimensions. It's a is a is a an anchor store for a for a, a, a shopping center in in Leicester, uh, which. Uh, has this this plan? It doesn't really matter. It's a multiplex cinema complex, and a department uh, store place like that. We had very little to do with. I mean, we we designed and delivered everything, but but as you can see, there is very little typological invention in here, and and I think this is also one of the reasons why I believe that looking at the envelope is important because is the last resort that we have left is the only part of the building where architects are still uh, respected uh, uh, by by commissioners uh, uh, so in this case well we could do some things but uh, they're not that relevant in terms of uh, what, what was interesting was how in this case the the idea of this huge uh, mass of uh, shopping landed on on Leicester, and how uh, the certain certain elements of the of the iconography of Leicester uh, and and the iconography also of the tenant were embedded in the in the uh, in the construction of the the envelope uh, in order to produce that that kind of uh, uh, connection between the the <coughs> in this case. The branding aspects of the of the project and the constructive aspect of the of the project. Leicester is a is a city with a big textile uh, tradition, with a very big Asian uh, minority that is very interested in in fabrics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and also the tenant is uh, John Lewis, w which is a which is the department store that uh, specializes in, in hoisiery, etc. So uh, the idea that we propose to, to the client, as opposed to making a, a, a blank box, which is what usually these buildings end up uh, being, was to make this double uh, skin uh, uh, made with a, with a pattern that will produce or will retrieve a certain degree of transparency between the inside and, and, and the outside, which I think is in this particular typology quite a quite an important political achievement no? to 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 be able to have uh, shoppers looking out in the street and having people in the street uh, at least uh, seeing shoppers I inside no because normally uh, uh, the, the the politics of these envelopes is of total uh, detachment so in, in this case, we, we used, uh, we inve investigated patterns. There were some environmental performance attached to, to this choice of patterns that had to do with the coverage of the, of the pattern. So we, we, we redrew the pattern in such a way that uh, we produced these eight tiles with different transparencies that despite the fact that we had to make the facade as a unitized uh, system, uh, by mirroring those patterns, they would always coincide and will enable us to have a kind of seamless uh, and yet differentiated uh, uh, envelope. This is the way the, the, the patterns are distributed on the facade to uh, cover certain areas or to pr protect certain areas from uh, solar radiation because obviously it was a, was a, was a glazed uh, uh, facade. The pattern was also scaled uh, to comply with <coughs> uh, ergonomic uh, dimensioning. Uh, so uh, you can see more or less that the pattern was supposed to to embrace the heads of different heights of of people, and it was a double membrane that would enable to see the outside from from inside, but would actually act as a, as a sun blockage but also as a, as a viewing blockage from uh, the outside when the pattern displaced uh, in respect to, uh, to each other. And so these are some of the effects that of uh, 
seamlessness that, that the, the uh, silk screening of the, the pattern on the, on the unitized glazed uh, units uh, produced and the kind of effects uh, of uh, reflection or, or, or I mean the, the, it's, a, it's a reflective uh, surface that sometimes becomes transparent and sometimes becomes opaque depends on the depending on the on the uh, lighting in the surrounding the, the kind of daylight that falls onto the 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 envelope sometimes it becomes more transparent second project is a project that uh, we just finished in Greenwich uh, which is right in front of the of the dome and it's not again it's a, it's a you will see it's not a uh, li literally uh, uh, <clears throat> a round envelope but the type of spaces that it contains are very much uh, similar to, to, uh, to this type of, uh, of buildings. It's a school of design and communication. The building is like a large fat uh, building that had to address the presence of the, of the dome as part of the master plan so it uh, had from the very beginning this, this kind of crescent shape that we turn into a kind of chevron uh, uh, type of uh, plan with a number of atria. I, I didn't mention this. Uh, I think the other, the other, in, the other uh, differential uh, quality of uh, spherical envelopes is as, that as, as, opposed, as opposed to other types of envelopes, they have a, a much larger variety of spaces contained. So there are large spaces uh, that maybe don't need contact with the outside uh, as opposed to, I don't know, a factory of an, or an airport or a shopping center or a housing where the space is always either in height or in depth uh, the same in, in the building. So normally spherical envelopes contain a variety of, of space and this is uh, also what happens here where there, there was a system of atria uh, that uh, were supposed to bring together the community in the in the school. We are not going to to uh, uh, look at uh, this in much detail. I think what what is more interesting for the for the question uh, tonight is how the envelope was uh, conceived. We, as you saw, we had to face the dome, which is a huge uh, mass. So. Uh, from the very beginning, we thought that the building should remain uh, like a single uh, object that didn't didn't reveal uh, any uh, particular scale uh, to the to the outside, and, and we did that by resorting to a, uh, to a cladding, a type of uh, cladding based on uh, a non-periodic uh, tiling uh, system that we in a way invented out of uh, uh, his horn uh, pattern uh, <coughs> which enabled us to make arrays of different holes without cutting the, the, the tiles uh, and uh, you can see basically that it enabled us to make uh, six different types of holes when the holes grow uh, they become also uh, corrugated uh, because of the effect of the of the tiling system, and they fit into the into a, an internal system of uh, uh, floors. So the the the, the, fl the the way in which the, the floors of the building are uh, are uh, thought is uh, by having these split levels that enhance the the diagonal movement uh, across different floors. So every floor has two lines of holes. Uh, the top one brings light inside of the, of the workshops. The lower one is aimed at looking out. And you can see that when the, the, the floor level uh, changes, the slab goes in between. That's, that's uh, uh, in a way what, what is again I think maybe interesting about this envelope is that, is that it, despite the fact that finally it operates really like a, like a screen, it's a, it's a radically almost anti-modern uh, envelope in the sense that it doesn't establish any, any type of uh, continuity between the inside and the outside, 
it is in it, it is uh, very um, um, dependent. Uh, uh, the, 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 the pattern of, uh, of the of the envelope is totally dependent on the on the section and the plan of the of the building. So uh, and and even of, of the functional distribution of of uh, of uh, different rooms inside of the of the building. So there you see the envelope unfolded and. Uh, uh, perforated with uh, holes of different sizes depending on the on the type of function that it uh, it uh, uh, that they contain uh, uh, this is basically how that envelope was des designed and the kind of oops i think these slides these are some photographs of the of the space inside but Maybe the slides of this project are, are going to be, because that has happened to me before. Anyway, what, what is also interesting about this, this envelope is that, as you can see, every time that the size of the window changes because of the program, the pattern of tiles automatically changes, simply by color coding every one of the tiles in respect to the center of the polar array of this hole. So, so from the function to the ornamentation of the building, there is a, there is a total uh, continuity, uh, despite the fact that the, the uh, expression of the building, the way in which the, build, the building is uh, perceived, is uh, one of uh, uh, detachment. So th this is then how different holes uh, produce these ornamental uh, patterns, and this is the building nearly uh, completed. Uh, at least this, this picture is okay. So this is the effect that it, uh, that it uh, produces. And you can see how every time that the whole uh, changes uh, scale, the pattern is uh, uh, reconfigured. Ah, this, this are, uh, I'm sorry about this. Uh, it, it suddenly it happens. I don't know for what reason these pictures are. But anyway, you can see this in, uh, already in some websites. If you look for Ravensbourne, it doesn't really... Um, uh, anyway, third type of... Um, are we, we are going very late. Uh, should I kind of conclude in... Maybe I explain just one project of each uh, one of, uh, of these. So the flat vertical is, uh, is, uh, <coughs> is a block. Uh, you all know this, this typology very well. I think what is interesting about this typology that has two dimensions, the vertical and the longitudinal uh, uh, um, uh, prevalent in respect to the depth of the space, is, is, uh, is, a, is a typology that makes 90% of the urban fabrics uh, uh, since the Enlightenment, basically. So uh, uh, normally urban fabrics are determined by an optimal uh, depth and uh, patterns like these are actually made with what I would understand as a flat vertical envelope uh, type. Uh, uh, you see other varieties of, uh, of uh, these envelope types and, and uh, this is a quite an interesting uh, I think diagram from, from Le Corbusier in which you can see how, how important the way in which these envelopes are laid down in the, in the structure of the city uh, suddenly qualify the, the relationship between public and, and private space in a, in a city. And I think this is the first important potential of this, uh, of this typology of, uh, of uh, envelope. You, you can uh, remember probably some of these uh, uh, experiments in which uh, the, the flat vertical envelope becomes totally disengaged. It doesn't have back nor front. It doesn't enclose uh, public space or open public space and, and uh, open uh, private space like in the traditional uh, uh, block system, like in Barcelona, for example. <coughs> uh, but, but I think the other important thing about this typology of envelope is that as opposed to the spherical one, uh, the environmental performance and the iconographic performance converge in the same plane, with equal, compete 
uh, in a way uh, for uh, uh, the determinations of the scheme. So in the previous one, the environmental uh, performance was not important, the iconographic performance was important. In this one, they are both equally uh, important and they have to be articulated. And I think that is, in that convergence between the representations of the community that inhabits uh, these envelopes and the environmental performance of the envelope is where I, I believe uh, the <coughs> the uh, interest of this typology uh, uh, relies. Uh, and, and, you know, there are all kinds of historical examples where the, uh, the, the, these type of envelopes try to convey a, a community that is made out of uh, cells or individuals versus uh, uh, made out of a, of a screen uh, a construction uh, system that uh, wraps uh, around the uh, the, or, or that closes the, the, the inside from the outside. Uh, and, and, you know, how, how these type of buildings are no longer possible in, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, say, I, I think probably here also, but certainly in Europe, uh, nobody will take you seriously if you present an envelope like this. Because they will think that you are... Uh, a kind of fascist and you are not thinking about architecture and you are unable to do uh, anything interesting. So there are other experiments that, that, uh, that everybody knows, this one from NVRDV, in which there is a, there is a certain uh, uh, attempt to represent things with the, with the envelope. So this, this is what is interesting about this typology, that at the same time uh, it, is a, it is a typology of envelope that is supposed to be conveying a certain message that is very often political. It's about a, a, an in, integrative uh, 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 society, etc., etc., versus you know uh, a more purely performative uh, envelopes uh, converging on the same on the same plane. And I'm going to simply show one uh, of the two projects. I, I had two projects for each. Uh, type, which is uh, uh, a project that we did in the outskirts of uh, Madrid for social housing, uh, where we had to comply with, with uh, we, we had to locate uh, 100 units, 98 units, uh, social housing units in a site that was facing a park, and we decided to compact them onto one side of the, of the site. Uh, and in order to compact them and keep the, the maximum height uh, allowed in the in the site, we we had to make quite a deep uh, deep uh, building that uh, then led us to believe that because of the low envelope ratio, we could try to make social housing in glass. Uh, so we uh, we made a very simple uh, block with a kind of totally. Uh, uh, straightforward uh, social housing uh, inside, uh, and then and then because it, because of the orientation of the of the block is west, we realized that we had to cover it to protect it from the uh, from the sun from the east and, and the west. Uh, these are I mean there were other considerations. I'm not not not, not going to explain everything. Natural ventilation, uh, double aspect units everywhere but basically what when the project I think becomes interesting is is when we decide to make that uh, solar shading thermal buffer all around this very simple <coughs> box using uh, a system that uh, is derived from from local uh, uh, sunscreen uh, 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 typologies but in this case uh, made with uh, with uh, with uh, bamboo, uh, a, a kind of local type of uh, of bamboo. Uh, uh, so what I think is interesting about this uh, this uh, proposal is that you can see the the acrobatics that uh, architects have to do in order to escape from the kind of Messian repetition. That is probably the logical uh, uh, conclusion of uh, of. Uh, designing an envelope to contain uh, housing, so you need to paint it in different colors, you need to make uh, setbacks, etc., etc. So in this case, 
what we say is just one single system, one consistent system that encloses uh, uh, <coughs> the the units and that uses the uh, the possibility that people will always prefer to have a slightly different uh, type of opening, uh, sun shading, depending on where the sun is hitting the building, depending on whether people are more or less uh, shy, those screens move and differentiate the, the, the facade without necessarily having to, uh, to use a, a, a permanent differentiation like in, in those uh, other more conventional uh, types. These are some of the pictures that show how this uh, facade uh, works and, and I, I think if, if there is something that I'm, I like about this, this project is that possibility of bringing together uh, a mechanism that is at once uh, uh, performing on, a, on an environmental level because it produces uh, solar shading, it produces, uh, generates a, a, a thermal buffer for the, for the glass uh, facade but at the same time it produces uh, the possibility uh, for an expression of, uh, of uh, differentiation. This is how these uh, fully glazed rooms are seen from the inside and how do they open or close depending on, on preference. I'm going to jump over this uh, uh, project and move to the last uh, category which is uh, which is the vertical uh, envelope. The vertical envelope, I mean, you all know what, uh, uh, what it means. Uh, buildings that have one dimension, which is the, ver the vertical dim dimension, largely uh, uh, predominant over the, the two other dimensions. And I think that in this case, what happens and where I think the, the, the most interesting <coughs> uh, opportunities lie is that the, the same dynamic of conflict between performance and iconography uh, uh, acquires in this typology an extreme uh, condition because they are the most expensive buildings to, uh, to build and at the same time they are the most uh, uh, prominent in, in terms of urban uh, uh, appearance. Uh, so, uh, um, I mean, it's basically the, the conflict between this type of of uh, uh, approach in which uh, they are they, these buildings become purely uh, an image that that is uh, wrapping around the uh, mass and this uh, um, uh, this this type of uh, of uh, genera generated envelope that that is driven by uh, by pure climatic. Uh, performance by I mean these are bu buildings in in Hong Kong where the facade of the building is uh, shaped by the fact that every single room in the apartment has to have natural ventilation and and daylight uh, 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 rather than by how the building is going to be seen so the conflict between those two uh, um, those two types of performance in in this particular typology uh, affects very, I, I think, potentially, very dramatically the, the massing of the building. Not, not just the, 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 the skin of the building, but the, the, the massing itself. Uh, other, other, I mean, let's, uh, the, probably the, 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 first, the first moment in which we uh, do a, a high rise or we, we explore this typology is uh, the Max Protech invitation to do a proposal for the reconstruction of uh, Ground Zero, where uh, what we uh, uh, try to, or what we use as, a, as an argument, uh, was uh, that the envelope, the massing of the envelope, in this uh, case, uh, has uh, an, uh, an, a structural efficiency. So uh, there was an idea of uh, uh, analyzing the evolution of the high-rise. Uh, type and, and realizing that that in the next step the only way uh, in which we can we could make taller buildings uh, was by taller buildings without uh, having floor plates that that were uh, too deep to be uh, used was to start shredding uh, uh, the the towers uh, 
uh, and 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 using them as um, as uh, self uh, buttressing uh, structures. So so this was the 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 proposal that that we made in which in which structural uh, performances uh, became uh, expressive. We were were we, here again this this idea of trying to to reconnect. Uh, efficiency and, and expression as as, uh, as something that we have been seeing already in a few of the other uh, types is uh, is what what uh, was driving this uh, project that was not only a proposal to make uh, a new generation of even taller uh, uh, buildings but it was also resonating with images like this no uh, uh, in the in the which which uh, we thought that in the particular case of of uh, ground zero were quite uh, quite uh, interesting um, uh, the the other the other uh, set of uh, i think um, parameters that we could mobilize uh, when uh, uh, Addressing the, the typologies of, uh, of uh, vertical uh, envelopes are uh, the environmental uh, um, concerns. Uh, there are no, there is no other typology that is as exposed to sun, as exposed to uh, uh, temperature uh, uh, changes as the the the, the high rise, the, the the vertical uh, envelope, and, and so there are a number of. Uh, possibilities that I think can be uh, explored. These are some of the, the investigations that we've been uh, that, that we've been doing, also uh, in, in parallel to other research on, on vertical uh, envelopes, envelope ratios of different towers that actually contain. Um, <clears throat> I mean, one one could see how compact the the towers are in in England, for example, or in in South uh, Korea, with uh, facade ratios of 0.4 or 0.3 uh, even, uh, compared to uh, to the facade ratios that you see in uh, in certain Asian countries. Now, I I don't think that these differences are due to pure environmental performance. Have to do also with cultural. Uh, cultural performances in in Asia still uh, domestic environment cannot be uh, detached from uh, from natural light and natural ventilation the way it can be detached here here somebody who is living in a high rise assumes that the toilets are going to be uh, artificially ventilated and artificially lit but this is unthinkable in 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 Asia where people like to um, bath uh, with a huge uh, window uh, uh, that they can they can open even if they live in in floor uh, 43, and that is what produces that those type of of uh, uh, effects of corrugation of the of the envelope. Uh, the way these uh, floor plates work is also interesting. There are for the same amount of uh, area. Uh, depending on how we basically shape, we can get different structural uh, performance uh, that then uh, once you start corrugating it uh, produces other uh, structural effects. This is a, this is a, a part of the, the investigation that I've been doing in Princeton with, uh, with uh, the students in this particular case for some sort of uh, atlas of uh, high rises in which we analyzed uh, climate in different regions of the of the world and try to uh, to produce a range of of possibilities both in terms of basic shape but also in terms of uh, uh, area ratio and then were associated to different uh, geographical areas. <coughs> And I'm, I'm going to uh, finish with one project, which is a, a competition that we didn't win. It was won by, by Cesar Pelli. I don't know whether it uh, actually happened. That, that I think, synthesizes in a, in a very interesting way that dilemma between uh, 
representation and efficiency that I think uh, uh, lies at the at the core of the possibilities of of the vertical envelope. This is a this is a site in Seville in in Spain, uh, uh, which is a city that for centuries uh, had the tallest building in in Europe and probably in the world, which was this building, the Giralda, and it has had a, a, a law that no building in Seville could be taller than uh, than Giralda and that suddenly uh, the current mayor, I think he's still uh, mayor, decides that he's going to build uh, for the first time a building taller than Giralda and forces a developer to uh, invite five architects to do a competition uh, to do uh, a tower in in this area here which has no reason whatsoever to have towers. This is the former uh, site of the Expo 92. But so there is a kind of very strong political desire from the mayor to say, I'm going to be the first mayor who makes a taller building than, than Giralda. And that's the competition where we enter, to do an office building for a private developer that is pushed by pure political will uh, to ask architects to make uh, a, a 180 meter uh, tower in that location. Uh, so we obviously doing in Seville the first building taller than Giralda uh, meant that we needed to uh, address a certain local uh, tradition that has to do with uh, uh, Baroque for example that has to do with uh, Moorish uh, lattices and uh, uh, um, clay, again, or ceramics as uh, uh, local construction material that has to do with uh, some of the local uh, uh, culture uh, of dance and movement and color and instability. Uh, anyway, so uh, the, the, we, we were kind of looking at those as, you know, this mayor wants to do the tallest building in, in town for centuries, and, and obviously we needed to bring some of these ingredients. So how we did this was by, um, this was the site, and there was no, no reason to do, but we, what we did was to make, uh, to take a, a plan of an office building that uh, was basically the, the office building that would have resulted if we had to do a tower, an 80, uh, meter high, kind of 50 story high tower uh, with the amount of area that we have which uh, gave us if we did it uh, uh, as a kind of manual it would have given us a plan more or less like that so what we did was to take that plan and twist it so that we would keep most of the conventional office base and maybe some some other base that were a little bit less conventional, but then link them. So get, get these diamonds and, and make the tower shift uh, between uh, diamonds in order to produce that tower that will, that will move, that will be uh, unstable, and, and later on you will see uh, how it also incorporates other elements. But basically it's a tower that as you uh, change position, because it will be the... the, the the most important uh, tower in, in Seville, it will, it will show different faces depending on, on the, the site from which you will look at it. Uh, and so this was a, um, these were different tests for different organs, but this is basically what is interesting, which is how the form was working. So it was more or less producing conventional, oops, floor plates, but at the same time as producing conventional floor plates, it was producing that kind of uh, uh, bar baroque uh, uh, section uh, that had also certain structural efficiencies. It was built with a diagrid, etc., etc. We are not going to get into this. And it was most importantly clad with this uh, uh, ceramic uh, tiling uh, system that that uh, produced uh, a pattern of uh, fenestration made out of these hexagonal windows that 
would uh, wrap around this solid tower. So it wasn't a glass tower, it was a in Seville, the place where there is a very intense uh, sun, uh, and, and so it was a perforated uh, tower with this kind of lattice uh, ceramic uh, surface. These are some of the images of the tower, as you can see, completely lonely in the in the park. <laughs> uh, uh, and I mean, I, it was a kind of completely surreal uh, project, but I think a project that that very uh, uh, clearly ex expresses this this conflict between uh, and and the and the you know the the need to in a way try to reconnect uh, the efficiency and the and the iconography of uh, of uh, of an office building. Again, today to make a, a, an extruded tower would have been totally inacceptable. Uh, so this is the, the last project. Obviously, I, I didn't really explain to you uh, what are the uh, envelopes to, to do, but I hope that the, the range of projects uh, gave you a, a certain idea of what the problems uh, are and, the, uh, and the, the possibilities are. Thank you very much for your patience. I, I think that that what you you say is is already quite uh, quite precise. When when the problem is is how to give continuity to to the to the horizontal surfaces, obviously the problem of piercing exists because you still have to to lead, you still have to make doors, but is uh, is uh, a, a problem that is much more discrete. It, it is more uh, local than in a, in a vertical surface where you normally have to uh, produce daylight and ventilation uh, all around. So uh, when, when, when you are on a vertical surface, the texture, the pattern, you need to, to produce those openings as a, as a kind of repetitive system rather than as, a, as, a, uh, as an incident. In the in the surface to enter or to uh, uh, bring daylight in, in inside of the of the of the space. So so that's probably why the the, the, the typology of uh, surfaces changes from from normally surfaces that are more continuous, the wood, the grass, the